We're live. Well, um, you guys, uh, it's good to see you this morning. Um, both Pastor Barry and I are excited to talk about the sermon recap. If you notice uh, any technical difficulties today, it's because we're operating on a 12-second delay in case one of us slaps the other one. <laughs> you never know. You never know what might happen. <laughs> Uh, it's live. It, it, we're, we're live. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google search Will Smith real quick. You'll know exactly, <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. Good morning, Pastor Barry. Here Good we morning. are in another new work week. Here we are. It's spring. It is. The pollening has happened. Are you, yes. are you allergic to no, anything? No, no allergies, no, thankfully. Pray, yes, <clears throat> praise the Lord indeed. I didn't think I was allergic, but then, man, it just the whole, the whole nose thing last week, it was, mm -hmm. it was sad. And there's like this you know, this, this is what happens here in the southeast. You just get this layer of yellow dust that's on, it's on everything. Yeah, yeah. But Tree, trees are blooming, and yeah. that's it. I love this time of year. We've got this cherry tree in the front yard that is just so pretty. And I just go out yeah. there and stare at it. Yeah. Which my parents used to do stuff like that. And as a kid, I was being like, <laughs> man, my parents are just so weird. I'm, I'm, all I want to do is play video games. But now I go outside and. Yeah, stare at the tree. Just stare at the tree. It's <laughs> just so interesting, so completely interesting. You, to you me. have matured so much. <laughs> Thank you, a oh, wise one. Now you, but but I know you're a lawn guy. Like, are you guys prepping the yard and that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, we we year? actually planted some flowers on um, Friday. Yeah, we planted. Uh, just we had one particular area that's just been. We've had a plan for it, but just we haven't allocated yeah. time and resources towards it. And we did that Friday, so it's we're watering and trying to keep them alive now do the boys <clears throat> give you a hard time with that like or, or have they kind of gotten into a rhythm of like okay you're young men you got to put in some work in the yard now uh sometimes they push back but they're uh my eight-year-old loves to help oh, um, good. so he was he was a huge help friday he was helping me you know dig stuff and pull out roots and all all of that so yeah yeah he's at the age where he actually wants to do it so i love that i just let him do it I'm looking forward to that so much. Our oldest is five, and they're they def you know they're they're, they're definitely helping more than mm -hmm. they used to, and they're getting better at cleaning up their toys. But you know, I'm looking at the lawn getting higher and higher outside, and I'm I know that I got to mo start mowing soon. I'm like, man, I wish I could just send somebody out there to do yep. my bidding, yeah, and then blow the leaves and the pollen. It's nice to have help for sure. Yeah, well, there's there's just a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know pressure wash do you do pre do you pressure mm -hmm. wash at all yeah do that whole thing i'm way yep. behind on that but uh, i'll just tell a couple of your boys to come over you've got like a they can do it yeah they well that I, I i guess they can what else are we going to talk about we already made our oscars joke we've talked about the <laughs> lawn oh that's right you just came back from a two-week trip to greece i definitely uh, wanted to debrief <clears throat> some of that with uh, it you. was a phenomenal trip we uh we saw athens and Thessaloniki and Philippi. Uh, the biggest surprise to me was Turkey. Uh, oh, okay. You know, I, I expected. I just this was just my wrong expectations, but more of an oppressive Islamic state type feel. Yeah. Turkey is a secular country. They're wide oh, open. Yeah. I mean, in fact, we would hear the call of prayer, and really nobody paid attention to it. You know, life just went on. Uh, <clears throat> but Ephesus, the ruins at, at Ephesus are. Just unbelievable! Wow. Uh, the theater there is, I think, it seats twenty five thousand people. Uh, and we had a group that got down and sang in the middle of it. You would have appreciated oh, that. Neat. They sang like it is well with my soul, and just to hear the acoustics of it. Um, Pergamum was probably the biggest surprise. And yeah, you mentioned <clears throat> this to me. Why was that? Well, they so there's a cable car. So you feel like you're in Colorado going skiing. You know, you take a cable car up to the top and. The ruins are in pretty good shape. It had the steepest theater in the ancient world. But about, a, I don't know, a two or three, maybe four miles from there, there was an ancient hospital. And it was a pagan hospital. Huh. And it was dedicated to this, you know, the snake that goes around the pole, the symbol right, of medicine. Right, yes. It was dedicated to that god, false god. And uh, it, it, was, it was just interesting and kind of spooky at the same time, all that would happen there. So... So you're traveling around. I know you had two, two boys with you, two of your boys yeah, with you. Yeah, my two oldest boys, yeah. And um, and all the while, obviously, Pastor's with you. And yep. pa Pastor's doing well. He's going to be back in the office uh, tomorrow. He's out sick briefly. But uh, Pastor was with you guys. Um, and it seems like he was like, your, was he y'all's tour guide? Was that kind of how it went? And he, 
He yeah. preached that message while y'all were in Philippi, which Barry yeah. was the videographer for that. You well, were holding the camera the for whole part time. of it. For part of it, yeah. Miss Miss Debbie did most of it, and then I, I stepped in toward the end. But yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. So he really everywhere we went, he was doing uh, his morning with Mac videos. He was, um, you know, preaching, and so. But we we had an official guide that w- they would give us a lot of the kind of the local flavor, you know, sure, the, the sure. history, the. Here's what's happening in Greece, and here's what's happening in Turkey. But certainly, he would give us, uh, you know, the kind of the biblical exposition of the places. So, yeah, it was it was great. <clears throat> that sounds like that sounds really fun. So your DJ lagged now. Yeah, I've, I feel great. And you had the, and then yeah, so then, uh, pastor called you in off the bench to uh, give the message this week, <laughs> which we're so glad that you did. I <laughs> guess before we get in the message, we should. Just celebrate real quick how wonderful it was to be with the Glacier Valley Dale on oh, Sunday. Oh, it was incredible! Yeah, I really love it when they uh, when we're able to worship as one congregation mm-hmm. like that. So that was really special, and they um, uh, they they were in there. I guess they came to the second service because uh, and they were sitting right there next to the baptistry. They had three of their congregation be baptized, and uh, and then after the after the baptism, they it was funny because my daughter was sit my, my family sits like right next to that section mm-hmm. usually, mm-hmm. and my daughter is like, why did Iglesia Valleydale leave? Because after the baptism, they go up and they have their own celebration, and of course they want to hear uh, a message in in Spanish. So uh, Pastor Andres went up to preach, but that made me chuckle a little bit. She's like, they're gone. Where did yeah. they go? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good to sing in Spanish. Did you take any foreign language back in the day? Yeah, I took a couple years of Spanish. Oh, okay, good, yeah. good. Um, and then a little bit of German, a little bit of Latin, but I didn't. But yes, I, I enjoyed Spanish. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really interesting. I'm mean, obviously very useful here in uh, North America. There's Spanish speakers almost yeah. everywhere. In fact, I, as as Pastor Andres was baptizing yesterday, before he, I kind of made. I was just moved by something. I could tell a little bit what he said, and I kind of went like, mm, you know, made that noise. And Courtney's like, "Do you understand what they're saying?" <laughs> You're like, like, "No, no. the spirit just got me." <laughs> Uh, that's good yeah there's always you know and i can't resist any time you know that happens all the tongue speaking jokes and that sort of thing when we're <laughs> singing in multiple languages that's really fun yeah uh we yesterday that uh, was um before the service started that was one of the things that i kept asking people like well did you study any foreign language like can you speak spanish that sort of thing i tried to call everybody by their <laughs> spanish name because mm-hmm. like in, in in high school i remember everybody gets a spanish name which Kirk and Kirkwood does not translate well, so everybody just called me Roberto. <laughs> Did I tell you that? I thought that was funny. Because that's my first name is Robert, so that was a funny one. And then Josh Pikes was Pablo, which that would just minister to my heart so much. Brody, did you have a Spanish name? It was really hard to get Brody there. Brody? No. Brody? No? I think, I think that's probably it. That's probably it? You didn't have one at all? So. What language did you take in high school? Well, I took Spanish, but they didn't give us names. So Brody know. doesn't remember. <laughs> Brody doesn't remember any Spanish. <laughs> so did you? What is? Is there? What's the? What's the Spanish version of Barry? I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it's like Bo or something. I don't know. That's not bad. Chris Johnson was Cristobal, which I thought was really good. Uh, so lots of lots of. It was just a joyful day. Yeah. You know, it's just fun. Just having a, a, a couple cu- different cultures in the room like that um, was just a lot of fun. All right, so then we moved into the message, and you, um, I was grateful that, uh, well, I mean, I was grateful for this message in general. Um, your text was really, it was um, most of 1 Kings 18, right? Yes. 40 verses or so, so we didn't have Mike read it, because we didn't have that much time in the service for him to read those 40 verses. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot. A, that's a little bit of a humorous assertion, but that's because it's narrative, right? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's not a Polian argument. Um, it's 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 telling a telling a story. So now you were now if I when when you were doing more messages, well no you were doing a Wednesday night series in 2020, and you yes. were talking about some about Elijah. Is that right? Yeah, we did Elijah, and and then followed that with Elisha. Right. And uh, yeah, I, I loved the. I loved it personally, just the study and kind of learning more about his life. So, so yeah, this this really came from that, and yeah. it was modified a little bit. But yeah, I could. I well, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's not the same thing, but I think that's the beautiful. That's the beautiful thing is that, like, yeah, the narrative is the same, but the applications can be yeah. so different to yeah. the congregation depending on um, which. Uh, 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 which well, what time period you're in, and the different things that that we're facing. So I guess I, you know, we. Um, 
I'd encourage everybody to go back and listen to the message. This is the famous, famous story of Elijah's, Elijah's showdown with the 850 false prophets. Um, my first question really is, is like, just to you personally, like any time you prepare a message, mm-hmm. and I know you especially because we've talked about this, like mm-hmm. there's a lot of extra material that ends up on the cutting room floor. Was there anything that you cut out Mm-hmm. That you were like, ah, you know, it just there's not enough time or, or whatever. That's kind of what this is for. If you want to hit us with anything that you left out of the message yesterday, yeah, um, <clears throat> I tried to hit the most essential part. I mean, I did yeah. cut it down some on, um, on on Thursday. I took I took some of it off, but um, no, I mean, th- th- this was the, the essence of it. And um, I mean, what what really stood out to me as I got closer into it is that, you know, Elijah was was calm he was focused he was gracious you know he didn't yeah. he and he was talking specifically to israel and that, that's something that stood out to me that god even though the people were so wayward that god still had patience and mercy and just graciously spoke to his people again you know yes. come, come come back to me and um, I don't know, that's just something that stood out well something that grabbed me that is obvious but i had not just i had not thought thought about like Ahab is the king of Israel yeah this is not this is not (laughs) Elijah facing off against like a Canaanite king Mm -hmm. this is the king of Israel that has set himself against the prophet of the Lord which speaks to just how misguided like how how far off they had gone. Yeah. So yes, that was an amazing grace from the Lord that he was willing to speak again. Yeah, and Ahab was the first king that had really set up an altar to worship Baal. Wow. You know, others had engaged in idolatry, but he was the first one that said, okay, now we're going to erect this, you know, structure that's going to be dedicated to him. And of course, his wife, Jezebel, one of the most just horrific um, antagonists in all the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, Her you know, just her life and ultimate demise is just just kind of a, a, a dark spot in the narrative of Scripture. Um, yeah, just hitting a couple of the essential things that just show the power of the Lord. One of them just was that, um, well, like I already said, you have Elijah, who is one person. Mm-hmm. And then you have all of these false prophets. And I think you said it was 850 total, right? Yeah. Yes. And... Um, and then they they go and do their rituals, asking for an answer from their false god. For how many hours was it? It's almost six hours. Six hours. They're <coughs> dancing around this altar, um, cutting themselves, even like mm-hmm. sort of sacrificing themselves in a way, asking mm-hmm. for some kind of tangible answer from their god. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Nothing. Nada, as they say in Iglesia Valleydale. Nada. And then. Um, and then the con- I love the contrast you made with Elijah's prayer there, mm-hmm. where he said, "Well, where, which verse is it, Pastor Barry?" Yeah, it's yeah. down toward the end. It's um, 30, 36, 37. So he's le- in less than twenty seconds, he just prays a simple prayer to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You know, answer me, turn these people back to you. And yes, God answered. I mean, just like that. And how long did he have to pray? <laughs> yeah, it was less than twenty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> just shows the power, the immediacy, the availability of yeah, the Lord. That's right. Which I guess that's kind of hard. I mean, sometimes that's hard for me just as a just as a believer walking a Christian life. You know, it's, I read texts like this, and you, know, you kind of wish that you could get the Lord to um, rain fire from heaven whichever, with every 20-second prayer, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, I hope it's an encouragement, you know, as I was thinking through this yesterday. I hope it's an encouragement for you know, busy moms, parents, you know, that some of us were in the heat of the moment. We don't, you, you don't have time to say, we well, know I'm just going to go take an hour and pray about this, you know, <laughs> or however long you, you don't have time because the decisions have, have to be made so quickly. And so, you know, even, you know, those in corporate America and they're just in the busyness of a day, you can, you can just say, you know, God, just help me. God, give me wisdom. It's those quick prayers and we can expect God to, to say, okay, I'm going to answer you. Well, sometimes it's even rest before the Lord mm-hmm. that, you know, may, maybe it's not always an active prayer, but when you slow down, you feel more available. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, that's not the reason that you use the illustration, but you had that illustration of the two football teams, one that just like was grinding it out for 80 hours a week and mm-hmm. another that took a vacation before the national championship. Mm-hmm. And it was the team that took a rest that ultimately 
yeah. one. I thought that was really interesting yeah. as well. Yeah, different approaches, yeah. Um, yeah, I, the, the, the idea of prayer and what you just said there ministers to me personally because I, 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 you know, I'm, I think I'm, I think I've followed a somewhat similar path that a lot of people follow of thinking that your prayers have to be long and flowery and you have to add more words mm -hmm. in order to reach the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently it's been more like, you know, Lord, I don't have the flowery words, mm -hmm. you know. I, don't, I haven't got enough sleep to think of anything flowery. Mm -hmm. um, here's, I know, I know that you're good and here's the thing that I need and yeah. help me. Remember the guy in, in the New Testament that had the long prayer and I thank you that I'm not like these other people, you know, <laughs> right. and it was, it was well-spoken. Right. And then the other guy just like wouldn't even look beat up and just breast. beat his breast said, yes. Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner or something like that. And Jesus said, which one went home justified? Yeah. The latter. Yeah. The one who, who understood that his greatest need was for mercy. And I think that that's, that's got to be what was at least partially what was on Elijah's mind. Like, Lord, this is ultimately an act of your mercy when you prove your superiority yeah. and run off these false prophets. It is an act of mercy that you would show yourself again to your disobedient people in Israel who have not served you. So, yeah, I think, like, if we're, yeah, it's that willingness to approach the, uh, the Lord with, with humility. Yeah. And so something with Elijah, you know, you have to go back to chapter 17, but the Lord told him, you know, he said, go hide yourself. Okay, that's in 17 verse 3. You know, and he goes to this, you know, really out in the middle of nowhere, east of the Jordan, really just lives, and the ravens feed him. And, right. of course, you know, then he goes to kind of northwest from there, and then God uses him to raise this, the widow's son. Right, right. Um, but so he had that maybe a couple years of kind of obscurity, where he really learned to trust God and to, to walk with him in quietness before he was thrust into this. So God said, go hide yourself. Then he said, go show yourself uh -huh. to Ahab. That's something that Dr. Swin Chuck Swindoll mentioned in his book. And, um, but the hide yourself part was that laid the foundation for the show yourself part. It's a common theme, isn't it, for prophets of the Lord? Yeah. Um, obviously, John the Baptist was in obscurity for many, many years before mm -hmm. he showed himself. Paul went away to Arabia that, exactly. three years. Right? Yeah, and, uh, and that's only like one verse of Scripture, so a lot of people miss that. But, yeah, like yeah. there was a long time of preparation before he went out. Yeah, uh, Dr. Swindoll preached a message on that at Dallas Seminary years ago on, oh, really? on, on seminary being your Arabia years. And cool. it just the... I, you know, I don't remember a, a whole lot about it. I just remember him talking about the importance of studying and kind of removing yourself. And he was like, if you came here to be just as busy in ministry as you would have been, then why did you come here? You know, and it was, it was really interesting. That is a powerful message. Yeah. <laughs> so he was saying there's value in those Arabian years. You know, we, we don't know much about Paul during those years. But when he, we know what happened when he got back. Right, so it was clearly <coughs> very impactful. Yeah. It was a message from uh, Leonard Ravenhill from, uh, in I don't know, I guess his mid-20th century. He's passed away for, several, for a couple of decades now, and he was talking about John the Baptist. And he said, you know, it took the Lord 30 years to build this prophet, and then it took the world six months to kill him. Mm. Just because wow. he was that... He was that ready, and he had that much fire on the tip of his tongue that the world wasn't ready for. Man, that was such a challenge to me. Yeah. Thinking about the things that were said. Go ahead. Um, so I was just thinking... You know, Elijah, one reason I think he's able to pray this prayer that we just talked about is because, you know, you go back to the previous chapter, he prayed, oh, Lord, my God, um, let this child's life come into him again. So he, he had prayed for a dead child to be, you know, raised again, yeah. and he had seen that. Yeah. And I, it's, just, it's those little things, and that's not a little thing, but it's those, you know, steps of maturity and faith along the way that when we get into the... I'm outnumbered 850 to one, you know, now I've got, I've got confidence that God's going to hear my prayer and I've seen him move. I see, I've seen him work. So, you know, as it's, um, is it Zechariah where he says, you know, do not despise the day of small things. You know, this, <clears throat> this would have been some small things, you know, and, and earlier in Elijah's life, but they led to bigger things. Well, and it's always, uh, Tr the trusting of the Lord like, is really about the Lord and his power. There's, there's an ebb and flow there. Why do I say that? Well, because as, I've, as, I'm, as my Bible lays open here, I can see that the chapter heading for 19 um, is Elijah 
flees from Jezebel. And so he's in like great depression after that because he, and he's so afraid, you know, he's, so it really isn't about like him or like power that he possesses in and of himself. It, is, Absolutely. it really is about the Lord. Yeah. Which that's an encouragement to me because people are always just like, well, I could never be like Elijah. And well, if the Lord fills you according to what he wants to do with you, I guess you could be. And there's certain yeah. things that you might think are impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Well, I feel like we've done some good work here, Pastor Barry. Um, is there anything else that we should say about this uh, about this message before we close up shop here? Well, I just I hope it'll be encouragement for all of us to just com- be completely devoted to God. You know, Elijah was outnumbered, but and so are we. You know, and <laughs> you, you think in this world today, and uh, we're, but we're not alone. Uh, you know, there was Obadiah. There was someone else who was faithfully yeah. serving God. And in the next chapter, remember the Lord tells him. What is it? I've got 5,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal. You know, so yes. Elijah That's felt alone, point. but but he wasn't. He wasn't really alone. And and you aren't either. We're, we're not either. There's other Christians. We're, we just may be the, the silent majority, you know, that, that love Christ. and uh, But God's with us in whatever we're, struggles we're facing today. We're not alone. I forgot a couple of uh, other things that I wanted to chat with you about. Okay. Um, one is um, we got to talk about this new playground. Here at the oh, it's which, phenomenal! It's so awesome. Yeah, you've got you got six kids. I've got four kids. This playground is phenomenal, uh, and it's mm-hmm. fun because because you were there yesterday. Yeah, we had back a number of our kids out there yesterday. Loved that was my first time to actually be, actually be out there. And there's all kind of little gadgets and the swing, all of it. It's just incredible. Did you try the the roller slide? So I I, I didn't personally try, but oh, my, okay. Yeah, the kids were trying it. You yeah. need to do it. I don't know if this is legal or not. <laughs> Drew Drew Warren might get mad at me, but um, but yeah, I I went up there to do the roller slide. Have you tried it, Pike? Yeah. It is insanely fast for adults. <laughs> like the kids kind of go down it, but there's something about the the weight ratio when you with an adult. And I like I almost like fell forward at the bottom. Yeah. I don't recommend um, like taking your shoes off. Your uh, people just get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> so Pike did it without his shoes on. So that's a definite no no. But the playground is great, and they're you know, and it's it's also accessible for special needs, yes. which is a really big deal. Yeah, they they wanted that from the beginning. Um, there's a pavilion out there, and some nice new picnic tables and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, so I think you know, I, I think people have birthday parties and that's. Sort of, I mean, it's it's great. Yeah. It's everything we wanted. It's to really be well done. Yeah, we should have like a staff play day out there or something. Unquestionably, <laughs> you know, of course, all of our you know, the adults would probably destroy destroy it. <laughs> But um, we are going to have like an official, I mean, there's not like a ribbon cutting or anything, but there's an official official kind of opening ceremony mm-hmm. after Palm Sun or after the Sunday morning services on Palm Sunday, the 10th. Mm-hmm. So pastor's going to be there. I, I don't know if they're going to have refreshments or not, but anyway, that's, so we're going to talk more about the, uh, the playground on the, on the 10th. Yeah. On Palm Sunday. And we wanted it to be a blessing to the community, right? I mean, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. open, you yeah. know, it's. It's just like I mean, I guess it's kind of like Veterans Park. Like it's if if people want to come and no dogs allowed. So it's not like Veterans Park because there's no <laughs> dogs allowed. Sorry. Yeah, they do have that sign up there. Is that sign still valid? I'm not sure because the other sign has our logo from like 25 years ago mm-hmm. that needs to be updated. True. Brody, get on that, please. I'm on it. Brody's on it. What was the last thing I was going to talk to you about? Oh, the boxing thing because you used a great boxing analogy mm. yesterday. But uh, well. Okay, so you, I know you're not a huge boxing fan, but you t- tell me which is the best. This is this is a test. Which is the best Rocky movie? Brody's Brody's. Oh, Rocky movie. Four. Rocky Four is my, <sighs> my favorite. I do like. So I do like, right. I do like Rocky Three, but Rocky Four is the best. It's hard not to like Clubber Lang in, in, in Rocky <laughs> yeah. Three, Mr. Yeah, Rocky, T. Th- absolutely. But but Rocky I pity Four. The fool that doesn't like Clubber Lang. That's right. Keep going. Uh, but I love. I love the. The whole context of Chapter Four. Yeah, or, or, or it is really good. Russian Strikingly form. relevant today. Yeah. Once again, with the uh, Russian <laughs> tensions being resumed. That's right. Um, but yeah, okay, Rocky Four. That's on our watch list for this week. And um, okay, I think we can end it there. We've run the gamut. Brody, did you have anything else? I, did you want to hop on for some more Oscars chit chat? I know, know that it I, deeply I, impacted okay. you last night. I He's wanna, okay. I want to thank you for um, saying Rocky. <laughs> He's deeply yeah. grateful that you said Rocky oh, Four. I thank the Academy. <laughs> okay, and we're looking forward to Creed Three. Okay, <laughs> see you guys uh, Wednesday. No, there's no there's no midweek this Wednesday. Not this week. Have a no. good spring break, you guys. Bye bye.
What's going to be the storyline of Creed 3, you think? I don't care. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm there. I'm watching Both it. Both of those movies are so good. The, the, first, no one, be so the good. first one was better than the second one. For sure, but, but still, still so good. Michael B. Jordan is directing this one. Oh, really? Yeah. 